Welcome to another edition of Red Cross Radio here on KQV News Radio 1410 AM. I'm your host, Brian Kanavish. Uh, a lot of people in the community are aware of the different things that the American Red Cross does, responding to disasters and helping people prevent and prepare for disasters. But one thing that a lot of people are not as aware of is the Red Cross Service to the Armed Forces Program. Anyone who listened to the last edition of Red Cross Radio here, we talked a lot about the Service to the Armed Forces Program and specifically how that program works and all the great things that the Red Cross does uh, for its men and women serving in our armed forces as well as their families here at home. And we have four guests lined up today who are going to talk a little bit more about this program and really just kind of share some stories and, and um and some information about how important this program is, not just for the community, but for uh, the, men and women ser- the men and women serving overseas. Uh, first up is Mike Adamitz, who's the Emergency Services Director with the American Red Cross Southwestern Pennsylvania Chapter. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Brian. Sure. As I talked about there in the intro, a lot of people think of the Red Cross in terms of its mission of helping people prevent, prepare for, and respond to emergencies. And that involves things like responding to disasters. I know here in Pittsburgh you guys do a lot of uh, fire response and and things like that. We have the flooding. We have hurricane response. And then the Red Cross is also involved in helping people prevent and prepare for emergencies with its CPR classes and first aid classes. But, Mike, how does the Service to the Armed Forces program fit into that overall mission? Well, it's just another type of an emergency that we respond to. Uh, you know, we have a lot of our service personnel who are deployed you know, across the country and overseas. And oftentimes, uh, tragically, you know, things happen here at home uh, to family members, you know, such as illnesses or even deaths, that it's important for that family to communicate that message overseas or you know, across the country to, to their loved one. And our role to expedite that message uh, being transferred is very important to them because oftentimes there is a, a short window in which an incident occurs and the message has to be relayed in order for the person to have an opportunity to come back home. So we're, we're basically just responding to another type of an emergency in a different situation. Right, right. So the way it actually works is uh, men and women, local families here in southwestern Pennsylvania who maybe have a loved one deployed overseas, and there's an emergency here at home, like a death in the family or a birth, they actually call, you guys call the Red Cross, and you get in touch with the Red Cross uh, stationed abroad or in the United States, but stationed with the military, and actually relay that message about the death or about the birth, and uh, the the serviceman can help get, or can help him get leave and come home and be there for an important emergency period during his uh, in his family there. And Mike, so how important of a role is this for the Red Cross, this military program? Well, it's it's extremely important. It provides a valuable service not only to the families but to our Department of Defense. You know, our role with our vast network of chapters and volunteers across the country enable us to perform the the service of verifying the information and getting the message forwarded through our network in a timely basis. We also serve uh, a purpose of helping uh, financially uh, through our network to provide loans and grants through the Department of Defense uh, to these service personnel when needed. So it's an extremely important uh, uh, service that we do provide and one that uh, I I know that families oftentimes are very appreciative of uh, having somebody in their local neighborhood that they can go to to help expedite these messages and, and information. Right. And you're the emergency services director here at the Southwestern Pennsylvania chapter. So correct me if I'm wrong, but that means you oversee the disaster response whenever your volunteers go out to the scene of fires and larger responses such as floods and and things along those lines. But does this military program fit in with the emergency services department? Is it actually part of um, the operations that you oversee at the Red Cross? Absolutely. Within emergency services, there's actually what we call three must services. You already spoke of one, the disaster side. Everything uh, as far as preparing, responding to disasters and education uh, to the general public. The service to armed forces program is the second program that we have. And the third one is actually international social services. So we actually have three different programs within emergency services. And you have... uh I believe Pauline Duncan told us last time, a couple hundred volunteers in your emergency services department, including a nice chunk in the military program that actually take on-call shifts overnight. And the service is provided 24 hours a day, is that right? 
Yes, we have a large, a large cadre of volunteers, both in disaster and on the SAF side. And, and you are correct. The, the volunteers do this, uh, these services. They perform them 24 hours a day. Uh, the most critical time for us you know, to utilize the volunteers is, is off hours and, and through the evening and weekends and holidays uh, when the offices generally are not open. And what's unique about the uh, SAF program, we, always, we call you know, the volunteers like pajama volunteers because it's actually a volunteer type of opportunity that could be performed at home while you know you're you're basically in your pajamas or whatever through the night so it's a really unique opportunity for folks to get involved in, and serve the red cross and serve their country so the red cross is looking for military volunteers uh, i imagine all the time right you're looking for people now who might be interested in doing this we're always looking for volunteers brian anytime uh that somebody's interested in volunteering with us we can find opportunities for them in a variety uh, of different ways to to work with us and volunteer with the red cross so from this military, uh, the service to the armed forces program, how big of a geographic area do you guys serve out of the uh, Pittsburgh office? Well, uh, typically when uh, a Red Cross uh, performs a service, it's usually, it's usually done at a chapter level. Here in, in southwestern Pennsylvania, we kind of taken a regional concept, and we did it for two purposes. One, uh, in, in our geographical region, which is Allegheny, Washington, Fayette, and Greene counties, uh, we had a situation where we had more calls than we had volunteers on the schedule to handle them. And we found that in our uh, neighboring counties, our community chapters, it's within the region. They had the opposite. They had a lot of volunteers, but they weren't getting the activity. So we, we kind of partnered with everybody to form one team. And Pauline Duncan, our SAF coordinator, coordinates the whole regional team. So now we have completely full schedules with a lot of volunteers and everybody's getting activity so they're staying sharp on their skills and, and really getting to perform the services so we actually cover nine counties uh, in southwestern pennsylvania through our regional team right and as you mentioned earlier mike this is part of the emergency services department so if there's a large-scale disaster in southwestern pennsylvania maybe the big blizzard we had back in february or a flood or something like that and your chapter's resources are, are focused on that do you put saf on hold for a little bit in the military calls until you have more time to handle them no absolutely not this is a, a again a must service it's something that we must uh, provide 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So we have folks that are dedicated to this, and it's just one of the things we have to plan for as a chapter and as a department that when we have uh, large-scale disasters that we have contingency plans to keep our base services going, uh, not only the SAF side, but our nightly responding to fires, uh, international social services if we have them. So, no, it, it, it will continue. And do you take military calls yourself? I've done it, yes. I, I provide a backup uh, to the volunteer team and to Pauline. Uh, I've done uh, not only uh, military calls, but I've also done financial cases with them. And it's a very rewarding experience, yes. And last question for you, Mike. Obviously, the bulk of your individual work is more on the actual disaster response with the fires and the floods. But you mentioned that you have uh, taken these military calls themselves. What's the difference, aside from the obvious, you know, going to the scene of a fire versus fielding your call at home uh, mentally, uh, what is the difference in how you handle the victims of a disaster versus a military family that's going through an emergency of their own? Well, I, I don't really know that there is a difference, Brian, be truthful. I mean, both of them uh, affect you uh, very similarly. I mean, you're helping folks who are, are suffering a very traumatic uh, moment. With the fires, you're, you're actually on scene. You see the people face to face. But when you talk to the military folks on the phone, you get to hear their stories. And oftentimes, that's the main difference is you'll get more of the story. You'll get more of the insight. You'll get to hear about the family member that's in trouble and everything. And, and it's the sense of urgency of knowing that, you know, it's now it's my time to perform, to help them out and to, to provide this so I can and help in some small way alleviate their pain and suffering. Right. right. Well, we're going to head to a break now. Uh, you're listening to Red Cross Radio here on KQV 1410 News Radio. Mike Adamus, I wanted to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Brian. We'll be right back after these messages from the Red Cross. Hi, I'm Amy Grant. When it comes to supporting our military, the American Red Cross is proud to serve those who serve us. When emergencies happen, the Red Cross helps connect service members with their families. There are many ways you can get involved, from volunteering at military or veterans hospitals to helping military families cope with the challenges of deployments. Please support the American Red Cross service to the armed forces. Go to redcross.org. Thank you. Home fires are America's most common disaster. 
The American Red Cross reminds you to safeguard your family and home by taking simple steps to stay safe in case of a home fire. Install smoke alarms outside each sleeping area and on each level of your home. Test each smoke alarm once a month and replace batteries at least once a year. Identify at least two exits from every room and practice escape routes. To learn more, contact your local Red Cross chapter or visit redcross.org. Welcome back to Red Cross Radio here on KQV News Radio, 1410 AM. I'm your host, Brian Knavish, and we're talking about the American Red Cross Service to the Armed Forces program today. We just got done talking to Mike Adamitz, who is the Emergency Services 